Italy is set to hold general elections on September 25. This follows the resignation of Mario Draghi in July. The election comes after years of political uncertainty and the rule of very diverse coalition. What are the conditions that led to the resignation of Draghi and what kind of challenges does Italy face at this point? In June 2022, so a couple of months ago, Mario Draghi, the Prime Minister of Italy, decided to resign because he didn't have the support of, of uh, every party anymore. Uh, we remember that in 2021, when Mario Draghi was uh, chosen by the President of the Republic, Sergio Mattarella, to be the Prime Minister, he built a government of national unity. So he had the support of practically every uh, single party in the parliament. Uh, this uh, didn't, uh, in a rhetorical way, in a, in, they presented themselves above all the five-star movement, didn't uh, support the, the government anymore. And it was much more like a political calculation about the general situation than very specifically on a, on a political point. So in June, um, the five-star movement decided not to vote the confirmation of um, Mario Draghi. Mario Draghi reached uh, nevertheless, the majority, but he decided to resign because he said there is no national unity anymore. So the general elections uh, were um, called because of that. So in, in, in three months, we had to organize uh, all the, the elections, that the early elections of uh, September 2025. Um, and it was above all for the little parties. Uh, which are not represented in Parliament, very difficult also to work on that. For example, Unione Popolare, the Popular Union, the People's Union, uh, without representation in the Parliament, uh, had to collect 60,000 signatures in 10 days all over Italy. Uh, it was really a hard work they reached, and now there is like a political campaign, that uh, electoral campaign that is showing how less politics matters uh, during these days. For example, uh, as soon as uh, Mario Draghi resigned, the war in Ukraine wasn't a uh, topic anymore in, in the medias. As soon as uh, Mario Draghi resigned, social issues were not in the, in, the, in the newspapers anymore. So it was like very focused. All the debate is about uh, what, uh, what candidate, what uh, clientele uh, uh, connections will be uh, and will go in the in the parliament so but how how are you living how are we living the situation in generally in italy i mean uh, the crisis that uh, started in uh, 2008 with uh, with the crisis in the us the subprime crisis and deepened with the um, uh, public debt crisis in 2011 we are again with the pandemic and the war in a very deep crisis italy is facing 10% uh, inflation T uh, italy is facing uh, with the um, increasing of energy costs uh, a huge problematic for above all little companies that announced already that they will stop the production. So we have like, uh, and the Italian industrial system is based on a little, um, little industry. So we have a, a situation that is like increasing unemployment. Uh, the, the wages are like uh, uh, stagnant since, since years. So like the social reality, the economic reality for the people uh, is, uh, is really problematic. And in this context, elections uh, are called. So it, is, it will be also very difficult for the next government, uh, even if far right or uh, a center left government, it will be very, very hard and very, uh, yeah, very hard to respond to the people's needs. Ahead of the elections, a number of political blocs have emerged with their own ideological positions. Who are the main contenders in this election and what do they stand for? Yeah, we can like define the blocks presenting themselves in the elections like uh, there are four of them. First of all, the right far right coalition with uh, Fratelli d'Italia, the brother of Italy from Giorgio Meloni, the, the strongest party. It's like a neo-fascist um, party, uh, which will uh, reach the, the highest percentage, the, the highest consensus. Um, they have the coalition with uh, La Lega from Matteo Salvini and Forza Italia of Silvio Berlusconi. Uh, like the polls are saying that they reach more or less 40, 43, 44%. Of course, they have like a very, um, how to say, a very repressive or very authoritarian uh, program with above all against migrants, against uh, uh, civil rights, against uh, homosexuality and so on and so on. So we, we have like this part of the, of the program that is very strong, very repressive, very authoritarian. But on the other side, 
we have the impression we speak a lot in Italy about like the a rebirth of fascism that uh, fascism will come back. And I think it is not true. First of all, because historically we cannot compare the situation we are living today uh, with the situation we were living during the rise of fascism. And secondly, because I think that the industrial politics, the economic uh, politics of, um, of the far right of Giorgio Meloni is uh, deeply neoliberal. Uh, they want to um, eliminate social assistance for poor people. They do not want to uh, integrate in, um, um, introduce a minimum wage. They also followed like the indications of the uh, of the uh, capital association uh, to uh, deepen the taxes and so on and so on. So it is very a clear neoliberal program of the far right. Uh, combined with like a repressive uh, arm on what is concerning migrant migrant rights, women rights, uh, civil rights. Then we have like the Democratic Party. Uh, we can say that the Democratic Party is more or less uh, similar to the uh, Democratic Party of the United States. Uh, they are uh, calling themselves that uh, the continuity of uh, the Mario Draghi agenda. So they are above all making a campaign to say uh, we, that the people have to vote the Democratic Party to stop the, the advance of, the fa of fascism in Italy. So their political program is really uh, just in differentiation and in opposition uh, with, the, with the fascists. And then we have the Five Star Movement. The Five Star Movement that 2008, in 2018 reached the highest percentage, the highest consensus with uh, um, 33, 34% of the vote. They crashed. They crashed a lot because they made like alliances with the far right. They made alliances with the Democratic Party, and they presented themselves always against the old, uh, old style politics. So they they presented themselves as something new. But when they governed, they uh, they made one measure that was very important for the people, for working poor people. That was like the social assistance. And so they will have, I think, a consensus above all in the in the south, southern part of Italy, where working poor people are a lot, where like precarity is much more expanded than in the north. They will have a consensus that is still important, but uh, in the in the average, in the national average, they will maybe uh, reach more or less 14 percent. So they will lose a lot. And at the end, there is like the alternative, the only alternative we can uh, we can present. It's uh, the alternative from the left. There is the U the coalition called People's Union uh, around uh, Luigi De Magistris. He was the former mayor of uh, the third city of Italy, of Naples, with a, with a very clear program, a social and popular program against the war and against the militarization of the of Italian society. Uh, for the introduction introduction of a minimum wage of at least 10% and uh, higher taxes on the profits of uh, both all the energy uh, companies, then for a real green transition, um, a real green transition that means that the money that is coming from the EU, the next generation EU, uh, that they will not distribute it just in the pockets of the privates and the private companies presenting themselves like as, a, as, a, as green, this is greenwashing what they are doing, but we have to force, and this is the message of, uh, uh, of um, People's Union, we have to uh, strengthen and force the, uh, the public sector for having a real green transition. So we have to invest in public transport, in public companies, um, and above all also in the health system and in the school system that is really, really, really precarious uh, today in Italy. The left-wing coalition Union Popolare has sought to present a different agenda before the people of the country. What does the bloc seek to achieve in this election? What are its slogans and what have been its experiences in approaching the people with this radical agenda? Yeah, the, uh, the coalition of the People's Union, Unione Popolare, it's a coalition of uh, like four different realities. This is, uh, first of all, uh, Potere al Popolo, Power to the People, um, an organization that was born five years ago as a, as a, a sum of all these uh, popular initiatives uh, the people's houses, the associations uh, fighting in a very anti-capitalistic and anti-imperialistic, uh, from anti-capitalistic and anti-imperialistic point of view. Then we have Rifondazione Comunista, that is like the, the continuity of the Communist Party of Italy after 1992. Uh, there is uh, DEMA, the Democrazia and Autonomia, that is like the political organization of the, the, the frontman we, we have, Luigi De Magistris, which is above all uh, linked uh, on uh, like uh, local level with uh, uh, city councils and so on, like progressive city councils. And then at least we, ha uh, we have like, uh, at the end we have um, Manifesta that is like a, a parliamentary group 
of uh, four parliamentarians which uh, who were for, before um, they left they were from the five star movement but when they made the coalition with uh, the salvini in 2018 they decided to exit the five star movement and build a new uh, uh, parliamentarian group and these four organizations these four uh, political forces decided to join the forces during this uh, for this campaign first of all because the time for making a political campaign autonomously for the groups uh, were not is, was not possible uh, secondly because of course we have like uh, consensus on the on the program like the four points i was uh, i was presenting before is like the 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 program everyone was uh, pushing forward and uh, and so we are making this campaign above all um, in the streets this is also something we have to to highlight like the the tv uh, presence of um, of the other organizations of the other parties uh, is very high we do not have the material uh, possibility to have this uh, uh, this presence in the TV, we do not have the material uh, possibility to make um, campaign with a lot of money. So uh, our um, our political campaign, our electoral campaign, is among the people. We we are in the streets. Uh, we are speaking to the streets. We are making phone calls. So it's really uh, a door to door and a, a grassroots way of uh, making a, an electoral campaign. It is very hard. Uh, because, as I said at the beginning, it is the most uh, unpolitical uh, campaign uh, we ever had in Italy, uh, because the topics just disappeared. No one is speaking anymore about um, about the war. No one is speaking about um, the social condition of the working class. And this is a way we can reach these topics by being there by the people, with the people, around the people, and uh, pushing forward our campaign with them.